Hey, what's going on? Bill's Krosama here. So, I'm finally getting around to doing this video I've really been wanting to do for a while, which is called the Reprise Review. Now, what that means is kits I've reviewed like a long time ago in the past, like five plus years ago, these are going to begin uh, kind of like a modern day review and touch up. And as well as kits that I've built in the past that I just never got around to reviewing, those will get reviewed in this as well. Now these videos are going to be a timed exclusive for members and roughly about maybe three weeks to a month after then they will go to the general populace. Uh, but for the time being I really do hope that all my members who are watching this, I really hope that you enjoyed this content. Definitely let me know in the comment section below uh, what you think about it and you can always hit me up on Discord if there's something that you really would like to see in particular or if there's just like any kind of feedback that you want to give me. Uh, but without further ado, the first kit we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the Master Grade age one normal. So let's get to it. Now I still remember the actual time that I built this kit. So it was 2012 on Fatima. Uh, really, I mean, I really enjoyed the build. Back in the day, I, I probably praised this kit more than any person I can think of. Even Robert184. I think Robert184 really loved this kit just as much as I did. Uh, but I probably praised it on a different level in terms of Master Grades. Because at that time, Unicorn was really pushing out a lot of Master Grades. But this just felt... It felt fresh, it felt new, a lot of different things that uh, they put into this kit you really didn't see in Master Grades at that time. Now before going any further, I do want to mention that I am missing some parts because yeah, this kit is about seven years old. So the back of the head, that giant white piece, I have no idea what that piece is. And I'm also missing the armor piece that goes on the back of the elbow. Now in terms of detail, this kit, oh my god. I love the details in this thing. And just to kind of point out some things on here, it's it's really just the etched in parts. So like you see all these like little tacks, and I did panel line this kit back in the day. But man, I don't know, 2012 was a great year because I just felt like we was getting a lot of good age kits, and not only the age master grade kits were amazing, but the high grades were awesome just as much. Uh, but yeah, you get all these like little vents right here, so all this is etched in parts. So you can paint underneath it, and it should, you know, it'll show fairly well. Uh, maybe if you do like a light gun metal on the inside. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, you really just had a large amount of just etched in details all over this kit. And like I mentioned before, these are things that you really didn't see on modern day Master Grades at this time. Because, I mean, we was getting the uh, the Master Grade Unicorn, and it's a great kit, but man, I felt like this was just, just leaps and bounds ahead of that. Now with this kit, you was supposed to get a kind of like chromed out sticker that you put on the back of this uh, ape piece, and it was supposed to reflect it, and it kind of like looked holographic. But I was a, I was basically just inept. Uh, I did not put it back there because I really just didn't, you know, pay attention to the instructions. So it looks flat. But uh, eventually, I'm gonna just pop that out and I'm just gonna, you know, chrome out on the back and then, you know, pop it right back in. But for the time being, uh, this is what it's gonna look like without that sticker, unfortunately. Now the legs did also have a lot of etched in details right here so they basically cut out all this plastic and it's just basically showing all his vents. This was not shown in the anime nor was it shown in any illustration I remember. Uh, it was not on the high grade so this was something more of a master grade exclusive to see all these different vents on the legs as well as the, uh, the arms. Now the only major stickers that you did have was going to be these black little stickers right here on the knee, but these are honestly amazing. I love these stickers because they kind of don't look like stickers, they look like plastic pieces. They have a very deep black color, uh, so you don't see anything as in terms of like fingerprints or anything, you know, like that would indicate it was a sticker. You also had a sticker for the eyes, the top camera right up there, and the back head camera. Now let's talk about its overall aesthetics and appearance. I honestly think it is super unique. I know a lot of people try to say, oh, it's kind of just a knockoff RX-78-2, and also the plot is very reminiscent of the original Mobile Suit Gundam series, but I would say that it takes the RX-78-2, and please don't hang me for this, but I think it improves on that. I think it takes a lot of the great colors and aspects of the original uh, Gundam, and it just makes it overall better. You piece of shit. 
Now I know when this mobile suit came out, people were really harping on that spoiler. They were just saying things like, oh, it does not look like a Gundam at all. Oh, that looks like a, a knockoff race car. Oh, hashtag not my Gundam. All things that you could you know, definitely imagine. But some people kind of came you know, around over time, especially when the anime did debut and all the you know, model kits were coming out. They were kind of like, you know what? It's not that bad. But me, Pop Pop Kern, I was on board with this the entire time because I enjoyed what it looked like and I loved the change it was bringing to the overall Mobile Suit Gundam scene. Now in terms of articulation, it is going to have a wide range when it comes to the head. So it is going to be on a ball joint and also the base of the neck moves back and forth as well. Now you're also going to have these shoulder joints and boy oh boy were these super damn cool when they first came out. They're basically on like a ball joint on a like little peg on a ball joint. So you are going to have the ball joint right inside of here and there's going to be a little clip piece that is going to allow you to snap it right into the base of the body but you can also bring it out because it's going to be on a little like peg uh, hinge kind of joint right here. Uh, then you're also going to have just the uh, the shoulder itself. But this is going to allow it to have a large range of movement. However, the bad thing about that is this is not going to be able to hold up much weight at all. It's just really not going to have much support unless you plug it right inside the base of the, sh uh, of the body. And the shoulder is going to be connected right here on the joint where the uh, shoulder connects. It can go up uh, about that much. The arm itself can go up really damn far. Rotation at the bicep. Now you are going to have two points of articulation, so you're going to have this one right here. And you're going to have one more coming all the way up there. Now the entire forearm and wrist is actually fairly unique. So this part can actually just completely rotate, and right down here is where the shield will be connecting. So you can definitely rotate it in different directions and kind of angle the shield how you want. But also with the wrist, this is something that's pretty damn cool. So you're going to have like this, I don't know, kind of like ball joint. I'll just take this off. Uh, but it's kind of like a ball joint right inside here. And then you're going to have like this little peg that the hand snips around. So it's going to have multiple ranges of movement just right here at the base of the hand. And then on the wrist, it's also going to have different ranges of movement. And the thumb is also going to be posable. Now for the body, the body is going to be on a ball joint and can just have a large range of movement. Side skirts can move pretty much all the way around. Front skirts can also move up. Back skirts can move out. Legs can move out about that far and can go out pretty much all the way 90 degrees and can come forward pretty damn far. The leg is also going to have two points of articulation, the first one being right there. And the second one is going to finish it off like so. And there's also going to be that knee separation as you see right here. The ankle can go back and forth. Have side to side movement. And it's also going to be on a ball joint so that's going to add a little bit more movement. The ankle skirt can also move all the way around. And the foot can go up and down. And the foot can go up and go down. Now for the hands, this kit is going to have like set fingers, uh, so these are going to be you know already posed. But that's actually a really good thing because it's going to give a little more stability, and I think it just looks good overall. So you are going to have some of these fists, two trigger fingers, two of these little open hands that's going to allow you to grip the beam sabers, and then two of these expressive fingers. Now the first set of weapons it's going to have is these beam sabers. So these are kind of like a little bit tricky sometimes to pull out, but all you're going to do is just you know, kind of pull down on this and you should be able to get it out like so and then just yank it right out of there. And you also get two normal beam sabers and two of the beam dagger effects. Now this kit did feature a little gimmick to where you could open up the cockpit and it was beautiful. So this is something I thought was really unique is the front dash like where the panels and like the computer and everything is uh, that actually swivels down with the actual cockpit. So you just fold that back in and then you know you can just bring it back out uh, and then just kind of rotate this up so that way it will gain access for Flint to walk in. Now I don't have uh, Flint in there because I did have him right here at the base because he was able to just put the pilot right there. I don't know where that pilot is but yeah he was able to uh, put him right here in front. 
Now this kit also did have marking stickers. So the ones that are kind of like right here, all the different red, all in the face. And to include all these little warning stickers all over the legs. And underneath the feet, you are going to have some nice looking thrusters. So if you want to just like kind of paint all of this different colors, you definitely can. And also paint the thrusters right underneath the feet. And this we're going to talk about is going to be the Dodge Rifle. So this is a really, really cool beam rifle. The only stickers you're going to have is going to be for this camera right here, as well as that camera right there. Now you can use it just like this, and it's basically going to act as like a beam pistol, but you're really going to want the overall aspect pretty much right there. Now this front piece can rotate all the way around, uh, but you're going to want it to get like this if you want to fold out the, uh, the handle, and he can kind of do more of a like a stabilized charge shot. Now you're also gonna have this flipping down mechanic, but there's really no way to like mount the beam, the beam rifle right on there. It's, yeah, this is pretty much going to be for the, uh, the age one Spalo. And the last item we do have is going to be the shield. I, oh boy, I love this shield. This shield is, mm, I think it's so spicy. And I know a lot of people are just like, oh, it looks kind of plain, it's just normal. I don't know what it is about this. I just love these grooves. I love, I don't know, I love the different angle it has. It has just like a very nice, smooth surface and it has like the different color separation right here over top. Man, this is just, ah. I think it's so spicy. Underneath is looking really good as well. Uh, definitely gonna need a lot of touch-ups, but it does have some decent color separation overall. And then the only part that you, you know, basically gonna be able to move is going to be this piece that's gonna connect underneath the arm. And here it's just gonna connect right underneath very, very easily. And like I mentioned before, if you really want to kind of like rotate the arm, all you do is just rotate the entire forearm and you're not gonna have any problems just getting that shield exactly where you want it to be. Now for comparison, here he is next to the high grade age one normal and the master grade 2.0 RX 78 2. So for the pros and cons, of course, I'm going to start off with the cons. I want to end this review on a high note, but for the cons, yeah, I would just say the armor parts falling off, uh, easy fixes. So such as the spoiler right here in the back, uh, you also going to have these shoulder bits, these little blue bits, um, those fall off fairly frequently. So you're going to have to glue those as well. Um, and that's really about it. I mean, his arms are, you know, a little bit old now. Uh, so it, it really can't hold the weapon up because the poses have been putting it in for the past like seven you know, years. And it has been holding up his rifle. So, you know, after such a long time of doing the same thing, uh, the joints have become a little bit weak. But, hey, easy fixes once again. Uh, outside of those cons, that's really it. Everything else is just pro. I think that this, I think it, for one, aesthetically, this kit looks beautiful. It is going to be probably one of your best looking master grades on your shelf obviously it's not going to uh trump the new the sazabi maybe even not the sananju um i think it's better than the unicorn aesthetically it's not as big but i still think it looks really good and it is kind of an eye catcher because of its unique design with that you know backpack and spoiler attribute but yeah, I, I would honestly say this is one of the best Master Grades that Bandai has ever put out. Uh, it definitely rivals a lot of the more newer kits such as like the Dynamis, uh, such as the new Verka, such as the Sazabi. It's not beating those kits, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, but it is going to rival them in terms of what it can do as such a simplistic kit. And it's generally going to be finding... Um, I'll say you can find this kit at a pretty decent price, but since they haven't really reissued it, Eh, that could be a wrong statement, but I still find it uh, in certain places for between $30 and $35. Uh, but if you can't get your hands on this kit, I would say definitely go and just take the plunge. You, there's no way, it's impossible for you to build this kit and be unhappy. That is an impossibility, my lads. But uh, other than that, hey, I definitely had a great time just taking this kit off the shelf and, and kind of bringing new life to it. I really just... 
you know, I think the kit appreciated just as much as I appreciated to put in new poses and just have a great time and kind of update this review. So that's it for me, guys. Definitely appreciate you for watching. If you want to go back and check out the old review, um, I'm going to try and find it and put, in, uh, put the link in the description. Um, if not now, maybe a little bit later. But yeah, the link should be in the description and you can check out the old review, which is going to be horrible. So brace yourselves. Uh, but yeah, I think this kit is amazing and I'd definitely like to know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. But that's it for me. So definitely give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy this review. And let me know in the comments if you want to see something else or if there's any other kits like in particular you really want to see get a reprise but that's it see you later